Guess what? A brand new Raspberry Pi is on the market, just in time for Christmas. Hello there and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me Tom. So today we're talking about the brand new Raspberry Pi Model 3 A+, which literally hit the market I think it was 48 hours ago from the time of this recording. Now some people speculate that because of my dealings with Raspberry Pis and making kits and things that I actually have some insider knowledge and knew about this. I don't. I have no idea. I get the news when you get it and literally two days ago Twitter got off the laptop in the morning, looked at Twitter and there it was, a brand new product, and I thought, yes, finally, I want to get one of these. Why am I so excited? Well, it is an upgrade of the A Plus model, something I've been wanting for such a long time, and they never did it until now. We now finally get the full power of the Raspberry Pi Model 3 Plus on an A Plus board. What do I mean by that? Let me show you inside the box. The new Pi box is a little smaller than the previous packaging. Looking inside, we get the main free a board wrapped in an anti-static bag and the normal multi-language leaflet. Looking at the main board itself, the Pi Free a boasts a 1.4 GHz 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU, 512MB of DDR2 RAM, dual-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board, and improved thermal management, with inclusion of a factory-fitted heatsink, meaning you no longer have to fit your own. So, what am I going to do with this new board? Well, I thought I might upgrade one of my original kit computers, which I have down here. This is the Ident Micro 1. You may have seen these in some early YouTube videos. This was one of my very first Raspberry Pi based kit computers to make effectively a, uh, a pseudo micro computer 80s looking machine, but with all the power of a Raspberry Pi. Now this particular machine, I'll take the lid off, has at the moment an original A board, A plus board in rather. So it's gonna be a simple case of swapping the boards out and we'll need to reflash a new operating system. So the current Pi board is held in via a series of nuts and bolts in mostly in all four corners, I think we've actually lost two. Um, so we'll just take a pair of needle nose pliers and say that this is actually very loose indeed. And we can just unscrew like so. Also not forgetting to take out the single USB connection that goes to the hub here. Uh, we'll just turn the unit over and we can just loosen the bolts on the underside. Uh, nuts just come loose there, which is a good sign. So it's just in this corner. Very careful, we can now lift out the old A plus board. And as you can see, it is a direct mechanical match with the new one. So all the spacings are correct. There we go. So we should now simply be able to swap for the new board. Okay, there we go, and now we can just apply the new nuts back on top to fit the board. And now I just need to reconnect the USB hub in like so. I'm going to reflash a 16 gig micro SD card, which first needs an adapter to fit into my MacBook. Okay, so if we head over to RaspberryPi.org and on the front page, we click on Downloads. And we won't do anything fancy this time, so we'll just select Raspbian, which is the stock Linux operating system recommended for the Raspberry Pi. 
Now, a new feature that they've literally added this month, this being November uh, 2018, is they've split the Raspberry build into three different builds, basically. So we have, as you can see here, Raspbian Stretch with desktop and recommended software. Raspbian Stretch with just a desktop or the light image. Now, what I'm going to recommend is just with the desktop because I find that the full blown image can be somewhat bloated full of software that I personally don't use. Uh, but I do want the pixel desktop in this case. So I'm going to ask to download the zip file. And this might take a few minutes depending on how fast your connection is and also how busy their server is, which whenever a new Raspberry Pi product lands, it's always impossible to get a decent connection to download so uh, you might be better off trying the torrent link but we'll see how this goes this took a while so enough time to make a cuppa i remind you this is england that took a little while but now it's uh, finally downloaded and i've got the zip here now it's probably better to use something like the an archiver app on mac or 7-zip on PC, just because if you use the native unzip technologies on the operating systems, they sometimes can mess up with the shows. So we'll just drag this onto here and let that um, unarchive, uh, extract. It's only a uh, 108 gigabyte image, so this shouldn't take too long to do. Okay, so we've now got our image file. We need to write that to the SD card, which is appeared here as a boot directory. If it's a new card, it may not mount at all, but don't worry about that. If we go back to applications. I should I can find it. There we are, Etcher, which I use. So we'll open Etcher app and we need to select the image. So we select the image file. Make sure it is actually pointing in the right place. 16.1, yeah, that's fine. And now we click flash. To want the password for the machine. And hopefully this won't take too long to do. All right, we're done. That should now have successfully burnt. So we'll say thank you very much. And now we'll just make sure that we remove our disk image if it's remounted and I don't think it has. So we should be good to take that straight out the computer. With the SD card flashed with Raspbian OS, it can now be taken out of its adapter and fitted into the slot under the Pi board. Luckily, the Micro One design allows for access to the SD card slot even when the Pi board is fitted inside the unit. With that done, we'll move into the living room and set up on the coffee table. I'm sure no one will mind. I'll just link the TV via HDMI and power, mouse, etc. OK, ready to boot. On first boot up, Raspbian can take a little while to sort itself out, hence the delay. Booting to Pixel Desktop did take a little time. On first boot, we get a welcome message, which in turn will ask for some details. Now, I don't know if it was just the mouse I was using, but I did find it somewhat erratic with it detecting multiple clicks when I just press once. Anyway, on scene location and region, I needed to select US keyboard as this was the layout the Micro One kit used. Next, we're asked to set a new password for the system. Now the Pi will look for available Wi-Fi connections. Again, this took a little time, but eventually it found a local list I could select my service from. Next, it wanted to do a software update Bearing in mind, I'd been here for a little while at this point. After checking, the Pi did an install before wanting to reboot. Okay, hopefully the second boot will be a bit quicker.
um, maybe a bit quicker. Ah, finally, some life. Okay, let's see what we've got on the base install. So we have a Python 3 editor, Google Chromium, VLC Media Player now included for the first time, and a generic image viewer under graphics. Okay, turning our attention to web browsing, this is the Wi-Fi Sheep channel trailer on YouTube. As you can tell, YouTube runs, but even with the 1.4 gigahertz quad-core processor, the Pi is still struggling a bit. Other parts of YouTube are also running rather slow. However, more simpler sites, like the official Wi-Fi Sheep pages, run a little smoother. As with most Pi Linux distros, the kernel command prompt is easily accessible. sudo raspi-config is present and still works. Although looking through the settings, it should be noted that you can't overclock these boards. This is mainly due to the auto-dynamic clocking of the CPU, although I've never been a fan of this and much prefer to manually set clock rates. A feature I really liked was the new recommended software option in the preferences menu. If like me, you're using the lighter Raspbian option, this allows you to install additional software. But like everything else, it took a while to get going. Once in, we can select from the listed options. So I'd recommend LibreOffice. For me, VNC Viewer is a must, and Scratch, which I highly recommend. Okay, let's go and install these. And again, we're going to be here while. So, and welcome back. We're done, and as expected, the system wants to reboot again. So this now being the third reboot of Raspbian Pixel. Okay, let's check the new software. So Scratch is now in the programming menu. LibreOffice is very much where you'd expect it. Let's see how it runs. Yeah, boot time's still a little slow, but not too bad and typing seems fine. The original scratch seems nice and zippy, as would be expected on modern boards. And although not set up, VNC seemed okay. So overall, the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus is extremely welcome. As I've said, I've been wanting an update for the A Plus board for quite a while. It's been great to get the Micro One machine back up and running with a new updated board. Um, a little unhappy about the operating system, the Raspberry and Pixel, I still think it's a little bit bloated. They are faster distributions for the Raspberry Pi, uh, but it is nice to have an A plus compact size board that can now run some of these operating systems, such as Windows IoT or the hugely underrated Ubuntu Mate. Seriously, try Ubuntu Mate. I actually prefer it over Raspbian, but hey, that's just me. I was going to run RiskOS on this, it would run it, but there's probably no point as RiskOS would fly anyway and it can't utilise the quad-core processors, the 64-bit architecture, the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, so there wouldn't have been an awful lot to show you. As for the Micro One kits themselves, these unfortunately have now been discontinued. They were discontinued in February this year, that's 2018. If there's sufficient interest, and I would advise dropping a comment to this video, if there's sufficient interest, I may look at a reissue or a modification, an updated version, something like that. Uh, they retail as kits without the Raspberry Pi or SD card for about £100, probably a little bit less depending on specification. Again, if there's interest, I may consider a reissue. Well, I think that just about wraps it up for this video. 
As ever, thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. If you're brand new, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, bye for now.